everybody, what's going on? Hellmite here, bringing you another video from Grab the Lantern today. Today, I wanted to talk about the Swain rework that everyone is so very excited about. I did not do a video on this previously because I had other things I wanted to talk about, but I did write an article. Figured I'd go ahead and give my two cents, though, on the YouTubes as well, so you guys can get a sense for what I'm thinking of the Swain rework. Now, first and foremost, I think it looks incredible. I think that... This is exactly what we all wanted Swain to be. Not some weird, creepy bird guy wearing a mask and hobbling around. Of course, I am disappointed that we lost the cane. I thought that part was really iconic about about Swain. And sure, Riot are making this big deal about, oh, well, he does still have it, and he his leg is still hurt, and the left leg of his armor is reinforced, but you can't see anything in-game. You can't tell, so... Disappointed that that was removed, but I think the rest of the appearance is really good I know a lot of people are making a big stink about him looking like Lucius Malfoy from Harry Potter But that's not that big of a deal in my opinion I think that it's it's still a kind of a really good look for the character and I like how he's still wearing armor He's got the cool coat coat on it's not a cape i thought i just think in general he looks really really cool even the kind of red demon arm that is a little weird but i'm okay with it i can dig it the other thing is talking about his kit, where if you haven't seen it, I will have the whole reveal linked in the description below. But I think his kit has a lot of interesting things about it. Swain is definitely going to be very different. I'm not quite sure how he's actually going to work in-game. Now, he's still, he's still incentivized to be at close range. That's how you're going to get the most damage out of Death's Hand. Obviously, his whole ultimate, you want to be standing near as many enemy champions as possible. But doesn't have as much of a reason to be standing by lots of people. And I think his kit has a notable lack of synergies. Before, I think Swain had a lot of... His, his kit had a lot of really obvious combos. You want to get Torment on them, you want to drop down your Q, and then you want to root them in the Q so they take as much damage as possible. And if you have your ultimate, press R and walk up to them. That way you get even more damage. That all combos together really well. I'm trying to think, though, of how Swain's current kit is actually going to function, and I really don't know. Obviously, you can never moor a guy and drag them into your W, possibly, and then pull them back again because they're immobilized, so you can use your passive right-click. And then you also possibly can then land a point-blank Q, would be my guess. But it doesn't seem like it combos together quite as well, and all the abilities as, as a whole just feel a little weird to use. And a lot of interesting things in this kit. Now, I will say that each indi uh, individual ability does make you feel like a master tactician. I think that Vision of Empire, especially, is going to be really interesting to see how people use that and try to line that up. And the range on it is very large as well, so it means that Swain doesn't even really need to leave the mid lane if you invade his jungler. He does have a way to provide support. I'm wondering, though, if that uh, range scales up, scales up with the ability rank, because I feel like you're not going to max that first, so if it does have to scale up, it may not be as good in the early game as I'm expecting. Uh, Nevermore as well. I'm really curious as to how that's going to function as an ability. It's not quite as strong as his previous W was, where it was just the AoE route after a brief period of time. However, it does feel a little bit more reliable just for damage. You can send that out, get some damage down, and obviously you can reposition as it's moving, so you can hopefully get enemies in the area of effect, but it feels better as just follow-up to someone else's crowd control. Um, the one thing I do think I really appreciate about the Swain rework is his ultimate is just about the same, but they gave it a little bit more oomph. It feels more like an ultimate ability now because he, it's not just a toggle or an ability on a very short cooldown. Swain has to commit to the casting of Demonic Ascension, he has to survive till the end, and then it has a natural climax to it as well. You get all the way there, you charged up enough, and then you explode and deal damage to everybody. The Soul Fragments as well I think was a good idea, but it does mean that Swain has to be played with other champions that have have high crowd control. If you're playing with a Master Yi and a, a, like a Rumble in the top lane, you don't have a lot of crowd control to really combo that with, and Swain will be very dependent on landing the Nevermore, so that's probably a good second max on Swain, because he has to make sure that they're mobilized to get the Soul Fragments, and he has to have five Soul Fragments to charge up for his ultimate, so... It's going to be very difficult to see how that works out, but I do think that, in general, this is a bit, a bit better of a Swain, I guess, design... I think that it works a lot better. I think it feels more true to possibly the character, as I think there's plenty of room for outplay. And it looks it looks really interesting. I'm really excited to finally play it once it hits live. Now, to talk briefly about lore, I know not a lot of people care about that, but I really do. I think Swain has a lot of very interesting lines. If you haven't already watched the Skin Spotlights video where it goes through special interactions, he reveals a lot of things about the current state of Runeterra. He hints that Cassidy's daughter has returned from the Void, 
he wants to know more about Orlon's hammer, more than he wants to know about Poppy, so how exactly is that hammer special? He says that Garen may or may not be capable of using magic. I'm not sure if he's referring to Garen's sunsteel armor, or if he's referring to the fact that Garen can summon a giant magical sword from the sky to smite enemies. That's possibly magic. Um, and the other thing about him as well is that uh, his just based on his voice lines, you can kind of tell where he's been through. Now he's possibly already fought in the Ionian. He's fought in the Ionian campaign. He lost his arm to Aurelia. Then he made a deal with the demon. He bested the demon, and that's where he got the spooky red arm and all of the demonic powers. He also may have fought in the Freljord campaigns as well. He knows Darius and Draven from way back when, so presumably that's where he knows them from would be my guess. But there's a lot of unresolved questions we have about him that we don't quite know yet, but it's going to be really exciting to see when his full lore comes out, as it should be relatively quickly. Anyways, that's going to be it for me today, guys. Go ahead and let me know what you guys are thinking of Swain rework down in the comment section below. I would love to hear your thoughts, especially if you're a Swain main. Let me know what you're thinking of his new kit. I know some people have had a lot of complaints about his appearance, but I haven't heard a lot of complaints about his actual in-game kit. So go ahead and let me know what you guys are thinking of him down in the comment section. would love to hear your thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. And if you really enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. I upload a video every Monday, Friday, and on patch days as well. And if you're looking for more Gravel Lantern content, you can check out my blog, link down in the description. I upload an article just about each and every single day for your enjoyment. Once again, thank you guys so very much for watching. I do appreciate it. And I will talk to you all later.